Hi, this is Andre. If you haven't seen this channel before, I produce music under the name Iterate. This video is going to be an overview on my sample slicer device for Bitwig, and I'll have a link below in the description for you to download it. Uh, before I go over all the features and explain how to use it, let me give you a quick demonstration of it slicing an old school breakbeat. Alright, so as you can see, the breakbeat is sliced, uh, it's mapped across the keys, and um, yeah, the way that this device works is that you can slice either by divisions or manually, or a hybrid of both, where you slice by divisions and then adjust the slice points manually. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just load up a blank one and show you from, from the beginning how to use it. And uh, the, the one I'm going to be including is not this one this one is a bit more complicated so it, this is the actual sampler device but in this one I have it running inside another polygrid and that's just used to uh, sequence all the parameters throughout this patch with these um, Parseq modulators so um, yeah so this is what it'll look like when you when you get it uh, you don't need to ever open up the grid window uh, the sampler is right here inside of the effects chain. And for me, that was kind of an important thing in making this because uh, my computer struggles a lot with CPU uh, using the grid, especially when the like when the window is open, it's a lot worse. So for big patches like this, it's nice to not have to actually open it up. Um, that being said, it's been running fine on my computer and I have a pretty kind of old beat up PC, but uh, it's it's handling fine. But if I was to run, you know, several of them, it might start bugging down the CPU. Um, anyway, hopefully it works for people. I think if you're, yeah, I think it'll be fine. Anyway, um, so yeah, when you first, when you first load it, you know, let's just drop a sample in there. I'm going to drop an amen break. And the first thing I'm going to do is turn off key tracking and turn on loop. And loop doesn't really need to be on. It doesn't matter if it's on or off. It's going to sound the same. The only reason I have it on is for visual feedback. Uh, I have the loop length assigned to this hold, so it always cuts off right before it, um, the loop ends so that you don't hear it loop around again. Um, sometimes that needs to be adjusted, but I'll go into that later. But so if you see this right now, it's subdivided, and that's with loop on. If I take loop off, see it sounds the same, but you don't get the visual feedback. So, all right, that's on. So the next thing, the next thing to look at over here, and let me open this window, is this first uh, macro four over here. So you have these four parameters. The first one is division. So this is going to uh, this is going to determine what resolution we're slicing by. So if it's down here, we're going to be slicing it into eight. If it's over here, we're going to be slicing it into sixteen. And then um, if it's over here, it's going to be 32. And then up here, it'll be 64. And then uh, the next feature is slice range. And before I get into that, let me just show you basically what's going on in this patch. So you have these eight Parseq 8 modulators over, the, over here. And anytime you hit a key, one of them will light up, and that's... That's which slice you're on. And uh, depending on your on the division, uh, it'll be the, the division will determine how many of these are active. If you only have, if you're only slicing into eight, only the first one's going to work. If you're slicing into 16, it's going to be amongst these two. If it's 32, it'll be the top row, and if it's 64, it'll be all of them. So let's go back into here. So let's say this sample, I want to push it forward. I can just um, grab it like that. Let me zoom in a little bit so we can see this. So uh, I can just nudge it forward like this with with these sliders. And then I can nudge it backwards as well. And 
And then notice it slows down right here in the center. That's because I have a bit of an exponential curve on this. And the reason for that is that these Parasic modulators were giving me a lot of problems um, for this project. Uh, because for some reason, even when they're set to zero, they still put out small little values. Um, they're very small, but they're still enough to shift the sample slightly off time. And so because of that, unfortunately, it made me have to make this patch a lot bigger than I was hoping to. I was hoping this was going to be simpler to run, but I just had all these all these issues with with the Parasite Gate modulators. So they have an exponential curve when you're in when you're in beat division mode. And keep in mind, there is a, another mode which is accessible from here from bipolar but I'm gonna get into that afterward so basically like I was showing any one of these slices you can adjust the, the the position and you can adjust the length by by adjusting the slice after it and um so the lengths are linked by default but you can unlink all of them or or any of them individually and I'll I'll get into that in a moment too so um so, okay, the next the next parameter here is slice range. And all of these parameters on this on this window are the ones you're going to want to dial in before you start actually slicing. Because these are going to if you change these, they're going to shift your slices around. So, um the next one is slice range and that just determines kind of the resolution of focus of these. Well, it determines the range that these sliders will go and that um it, that doesn't really, uh, it, it's going to work different in manual mode, but I'll get into that. All right, so uh, then there's trim start. So this determines where where the sample begins. So you can just click on the first sample and move it up. Like, let's say if I wanted this to start over here, I could do that. And then wherever you have the trim start and the trim end, the the subdivisions are going to happen between that length. So it'll, it'll subdivide between the start point and the end point. So I'm going to put those back. And then uh, let's see what we have here. So, okay, the next, the next one is envelope. So when you're loading a sample in, sometimes if it goes past the loop point or it ends too early, you might want to adjust this. But generally, for most samples, uh, once you adjust it for one of them, it should work consistently throughout the sample, at least within the, the division. Sometimes you have to adjust it for another division, but within the division, they should work consistent even if the samples are different lengths because, like I said, the sample length is assigned to the hold over here. Uh, and then the next option over here is free length. Uh, that that relates to how the length works. Let me get into that in a second. I want to show you the process of... Uh, of actually dialing in slices. I'm gonna increase the resolution to 32. So like, let's say I want to, um, I want to kind of fine tune this. One thing, holding shift when you move these sliders kind of gives you better focus on it. So uh, I put this um, knob over here, or this button that says hold, and that will just give you a continuous retrigger so that you can let go of the um, of the keyboard and you can just uh, hold shift and dial in all these slices. So here, let me turn this down a little bit so that the sound doesn't get annoying. So let's say I want to uh, adjust adjust this to be a little shorter. I can just put this hold on. And then go to the sample right oops right after it and now let's go to another sample let's say this one over here and notice I'm adjusting the sample after it to, to change the length So yeah, that's basically why that hold function is over there. Okay. So one thing about that hold too, so that's hitting, that's making a retrigger, and um, just for the hell of it, when I put the hold in, I figured I might as well make a, 
another retrigger that's kind of like usable for doing stutters. Uh, so there's you can hold down just this retrig over here, and that'll give you stutters based on this rate. And then um, while I was at it, I made another retrigger mode. I'm not sure if I'm going to leave this in. It might be an unnecessary feature, but uh, there's another retrigger that kind of acts a little bit more like the retriggers on old electron boxes. So if if you bring up the amount when it's at a low rate, you'll just get this little kind of squeak on the drum. I've actually got another patch that sounds a lot more. It's more like the old electron retriggers, but I'm it was like no need to put it in here this is just kind of a little extra thing so if you bring this up you'll get these little kind of squeaky re-triggers and then if we bring the rate up and so there so these these the other ones sustain these ones um you hold it down and it's going to retrig however much based on this where this retrig amount is Okay, so that's that retrig mode. And like I said, I'm not sure if I'm going to keep that in there. So the next thing is, let's uh, get into the length. So so one thing, you might have noticed the samples kind of flipping on each other a couple times. That's because if if a sample crosses over the, the one in front of it, um, what I have it set to do is just flip like this. And um, when it does that, it flips to the default size of a slice within that resolution and then you can adjust it from there but the reason i have it doing this is otherwise when it would like come right up on the next sample sometimes it would just glitch out and sound weird and then the other option was to like shift the next sample but i like i don't want the sample before shipping this shifting the sample after um because it just messes things up so this seemed like like a better way to do it and then um yeah so for any one of these samples you can unlink the connection between the between these samples like let's say for example if you wanted this sample to be very long but you still want the samples that are over here in front of it you can do that by uh unlinking that sample from from the length so to do that if you just hit unlink um then there's this free length button so uh you can determine the length with this and one thing too if you bring it very short you'll get very glitchy stutters oh if you put on sustain while you do that then you'll get those stutters okay so um so if you want to just link that one unlink that one step what you can do is go down to these over here so these, the first one says unlink, and the other one says free length. So if I want to unlink this step, I can just see where the gray bar is and draw a line there. And that's going to make that step unlinked. And then I can go over to free length, and I can, I can adjust it to adjust the size of the, of the length of that sample. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so... Um, uh, what else do we have? All right, so let's get into the last thing is the manual mode. So manual mode works totally different than the other modes um, or than the main subdivision mode. Manual mode, so in subdivision mode, when as long as these are all in the center, these are placed exactly uh, in relation to the sample, so it's, so it's perfectly subdivided. In, bipo in bipolar mode, well, which is the manual mode, it's not really related to the sample and um so yeah and it's you don't also you also you don't have that exponential curve so you have a linear curve and it's bipolar so in this mode it'll, it'll actually start down here and then so it kind of gives you a bit more range so it's so uh it's it's easier and um for me the the reason i have these two modes I feel like generally I kind of prefer this mode, the bipolar mode, for samples that are more sort of all over the place or less on the grid. The beat division mode I think works better if you have a sample that's generally on the grid, but there's just a few things off and you want to adjust them. But um, 
if you have samples that are kind of all over the place, this mode is going to be a little bit easier. Um, here, I can show you quickly an example of using this mode. So uh, let me throw in another old old breakbeat in here. Did that work? Let's see. All right. So one thing in this mode, if I'm using bipolar mode, I'll probably just take the slices that are coming after and just raise them up so that they don't interfere. And then I'll just kind of go one by one and just bring slices down so that to, to the sort of length where I want and then move on to the next slice. So if I was to do that thing I showed earlier with um, hitting hold and doing the reach, oops, that's a very fast one. <laughs> So I can adjust that, then go to the next one, and adjust that, then go to the next one. And so that one, because it's all the way there, you don't hear it because it's at the end. But now I can just bring it back. Oops, but I was trying to get the length on this one. Yeah. So basically, you can see now I can adjust this one to get the length for that one, and just keep going down through it. Like that. Uh, I'll do one more and then move on from this part. Okay, so yeah, that's the manual mode. And so you can see it's it's all down here. <coughs> and, uh, <coughs> excuse me, uh, That that's pretty much it. I think that's all the features. So um, hopefully this works well for people. I'm gonna put this uh, I'm going to put this on the Bitwiggers site for free. Uh, if you find it useful and end up using it in your production, a donation would be cool. I'll put a link where you can donate if you feel like it in the in the description. And uh, yeah, that's about it. As for why I made this patch, you know, um, so in Bitwig there is no slice mode in the sample uh, in the sampler. You can slice to a multi sample. You can slice an audio clip by right clicking on the clip and slicing by onsets or uh, transient detection or or a beat, well, it's, all right, whatever. Or a beat detection, or um, uh, what was I going to say? Sorry, I'm spacing out. Anyway, yeah, you can right-click a sample to um, slice it to a multi-sample. But for me, it doesn't have the same feel as actually slicing within a sampler, because I like to be able to hit a pad or hit a key and know exactly what the sample is, and you know, <coughs> and uh, adjust the slice points like this. So um. Yeah, hopefully we'll get a slice mode in the sample in the sampler at some point. But anyway, the, uh, this this patch is working. I, I've tried a few different methods of doing this. I put a video up last week showing another slicer that I was that I was working on, and uh, <coughs> I had said that I was going to upload it that day and for people to download, but I didn't because I ended up revisiting it and I I didn't really feel like I liked that technique as much. So I kind of went down a rabbit hole of trying to figure out a better way to do this, and that's how this project came about. Uh, anyway, let me know how this works for you, uh, if it works well, if there's any problems with it. And uh, yeah, I hope you all enjoy. Thanks. Bye.